If you watched my video about installing six Ubuntus on one external drive, you know that you can install all six with just one swap partition and they will share the partition because they only work one at a time. However, the same thing is not true of Fedora. If you install Fedora with another Linux distribution, whether it is five other distributions or just one other distribution, each Fedora installation wants its own swap partition and it won't share it with others. The difference is in the installers. The Ubiquiti installer used by Ubuntu and most of its derivatives will immediately recognize any existing swap partition and use it unless you specifically instruct it not to. On the other hand, the Anaconda installer used by Fedora, also by Red Hat, CentOS, Aurora, etc., will not use any swap partition unless you explicitly tell it to use that partition. And the only way to tell it to use the partition is by either installing a new partition or by reformatting an existing partition, which makes it unavailable for the other distributions to use. So if you ignore this problem, what you're going to find is if you install Fedora with other Linux distributions, somebody is going to be without a swap partition. I'll show you how to remedy that later. Now, if you're installing Fedora next to Windows, you don't have to worry because Windows doesn't use Linux swap anyway. Here I'm going to show you stills from an installation on actual hardware so you can see the partitioning process for using Fedora with other Linux distributions. I'm not going to show you the part before partitioning or after partitioning, but you can see my video on Fedora 24 GNOME 320 if you want to see the entire installation process. So first we start with the installation summary. We have to select a disk. And in this case, I'm going to select my external drive, on which I already had six Linux distributions installed. I deleted one of the existing partitions using gparted, and that's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to click on my external drive. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom and click on full disk summary and bootloader. And I'm going to make sure the external drive is where the bootloader is going to be installed by clicking on set as boot device. However, if you notice, it's already checked. Then I'm going to click on close. Now I'm going to click on I will configure partitioning. And then I'm going to click on done. Now I get a list of five other Linux distributions in this case, they all show up as Ubuntu. However, there is another partition which doesn't show up, and that's the blank partition. And if you notice at the bottom, it says available space, 154.3 gigabytes. That's the size of the blank partition, and Fedora will already use that unless you tell it to use another partition. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the drop-down menu and not use LVM, Logical Volume Management. I'm going to instead select Standard Partition. Then I'm going to click on the plus sign to add a new mount point. And the dialog box opens. I'm going to make this a swap partition. So I'm going to 
click on swap and I'm going to give it four gigabytes of disk space. Notice that I've abbreviated gigabytes capital G lowercase i capital B. You have to do that to get the Fedora installer to read the correct number. If you just say capital GB, it will provide a different number. Now I'm going to click on add mount point. And that now shows up on the screen as a swap partition with four gigabytes. Now I'm going to click on the plus sign to add a new mount point. In this case, I'm going to mount it at forward slash, which is root, not boot, where the arrow is, but root, the forward slash. I'm going to give it the space remaining on the drive, which if you notice in the lower left-hand corner is 150.3 gigabytes. And then I'm going to add the mount point. Now you see on top I have a root partition designated with the forward slash on SDC9 with 150.29 gigabytes and I have a swap partition of 4 gigabytes. The Fedora installer does not recognize any other swap partition. Now I'm going to click on Done, and I get a summary of the changes. I've created a partition on SDC8. I've created a partition on SDC9. I've formatted SDC9 as EXT4 and mounted it at forward slash, or the root directory. And I have created a swap partition on SDC8. So I'm going to accept the changes. And then click on Begin Installation. So that's the end of the partitioning process with the Fedora installer. Now if I run that version of Fedora, which in this case was Fedora with GNOME 320, and check resources on the system monitor, you'll note that in the middle there, under swap, it says zero bytes of four gigabytes, meaning that it is using zero bytes of four gigabytes available swap. Now, if I open Gparted, and look at that disk, device SDB, you'll see that it has nine partitions. And when I right click on partition eight, you'll notice that the option on the menu is swap off. That means if I click on that, I will turn the swap off. That means that the swap is currently on. And if you notice at the left under device SDB8, you see a little key, which means that that swap partition is locked. However, the existing swap partition, which is on SDB1, labeled Linux swap at the top of the list there, does not have a little key next to it, meaning it's unlocked meaning that this particular installation, Fedora on SDB9, does not use device SDB1. It only uses device SDB8. So I would not click on swap off if I wanted to turn it off, but I don't really want to turn it off, I just wanted to show this to you. Now if I right click on device SDB1, the other swap partition, you'll notice that the drop down menu has an option swap on, which will turn the swap on. 
which means it is currently off. Of course, I don't want to turn it on in this case, but I just wanted to show that to you. If I load one of the other Linux distributions, and in this case I'm loading Linux Mint, which is on one of the other partitions, you'll notice that I have zero bytes of six gigabytes, meaning that I have swap available, but I'm not using any of it. So all of the distributions on this disk have at least one swap partition available, but they're different partitions in the case of Fedora. And if I load Gparted from Linux Mint, I see that device sdb1 is locked. It doesn't have a little key. In this case, it has a little keypad type of combination lock. It's just a different symbol. Device sdb1, the Linux swap partition that Mint is using, is in use, it's locked. Whereas device SDB8, which Mint is not using, but which Fedora would be using, is unlocked. If I right click on device SDB1, you'll notice that I have an option swap off, which turns the swap off. And that means that the swap is currently on. On the other hand, if I right-click on device SDB8, the other Linux swap partition, I have an option to swap on or turn the swap on, which means that the swap is currently off. So all of the other Linux distributions on this disk are still sharing device SDB1 and only Fedora is using device SDB8. Now here's an example of what happens when you don't follow these directions and you ignore the problem. You end up with one partition with no swap at all. In this case it happens to be Ubuntu Mate which I installed on the same drive as Fedora, but I installed Mate first and, and I installed Fedora later and I neglected this issue. So I ended up with no swap at all available on Ubuntu Mate. Now you may say, well, do I need a Linux swap? And the answer is most of the time, no. But some of the time, yes, even though I have almost four gigabytes of random access memory available, there are some applications which will use some swap even though they have plenty of random access memory available. And those applications may not run correctly unless you have some swap available. I can't tell you which ones they are because things may work differently on different systems, but you can check yourself by running the system monitor or using top or htop from the terminal to see if there's any existing swap and how much is used while a particular application is running. And here's a case running Ubuntu Mate, where I have no swap available. So I'm going to open Gparted, enter my password, and click on Authenticate. Then I'm going to right-click on the existing swap partition and click on Swap On, turning the swap on for this distribution. 
Now you see I have zero bytes used of 3.9 gigabytes available. This only works while the system is operating. It isn't persistent, so you have to do this every time you start up the system. There is a way of curing this problem permanently, but it involves editing FSTAB, F-S-T-A-B, the file system table, but that's far too complicated for beginning or sometimes even intermediate users. So it's better to do it right the first time. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.